Hello, so today I have a bit of a different video to what I normally do. Uh, this is more of a discussion video on a what if scenario if there were hard ones per turns in the game. This isn't me trying to push for a position or anything like that. I don't actually know what I think about whether or not hard ones per turns are a good idea or not because there are obviously benefits and drawbacks. I'm not paid by Bush Road, so I'm not going to be going out of my way to spend loads of time researching how uh, good the idea would be and recommending it. So uh, that's not what this video is about. It's more just um, more just like taking a look at uh, the pros and cons, obviously from my own limited perspectives, because I'm obviously going to be basing this somewhat on my own personal experiences or cards that kind of come to my mind more. So there will obviously be some biases in, in my perceptions because there's going to be a lot of cards I'll just probably ignore and disregard. We are talking about a whole game that's been around for 10 years. So obviously if you introduced a rule that affects an entire game, there's a lot of implications that you have to look out for. So it's more like a, just a fun topic video that I'm just making in response because of uh, Team APS. Basically, Paul from T Team APS, he made a video uh, talking about uh, the idea of hard ones turns in Yu-Gi-Oh! and sort of discussing like what uh, would happen if they were introduced. So that's um, sort of like me doing an attempt with the Vanguard uh, scenario. But in this case, I'm also, also going to cover some popular decks as well that would also be affected. So some hot topic decks, of course, um, as well as just the things that come into my own mind. Um, so I think in Vanguard, it might have more of an impact because I've actually spoken to um, Solemn Vanguard about this topic. And uh, in Yu-Gi-Oh, it wouldn't affect the format quite as much because there's a lot of hard once per turns anyway. And people just kind of alternate between a lot of different hard once per turns through loads of combos and things. So the decks that get played commonly wouldn't be affected but the cards on restriction list uh, would then lose reason to be on the restriction list as well so it probably affects uh, some of the other cards in the game that aren't in the spotlight right now in the in the context of Yu-Gi-Oh based on my discussion with him but uh, in Vanguard I think that could vary but I want to see what you guys think as I'm going through this and I want to see what ideas you have like what what kind of downsides and positives you would see or or like the implications in general. It's more like just a discussion um, in, in a sense, like that's that's all it really is. And it's just a bit of um, interesting thing to really kind of talk about. So as you can see on my screen, Mythical Hell Sky Beast Fenrir is a Genesis card. I know quite a bit about Genesis. So uh, this card is actually one of my kind of earlier memories of cards that I used without without actually sticking to using it once per turn because this card had a Count Blast 1 and Soul Blast 3 cost. So if someone just gives me a lot of damage, which used to be more common back in the day, then I'll use this skill multiple times over. We also have Count Charge PGs being played a bit as well. So this card uh, would be affected, of course, so that you would only be able to use it once, which would be a downside because this card is already sort of slipping when it comes to how useful it is in the game. Uh, especially with um, Tara being banned as well. I think there's even less reasons maybe to play this. But that's um, that's more like, not even just that. There's even the other issue with uh, Revelation also being a far less appealing deck. Although this card was never really used much in Revelation to begin with. And I think there's a lot of better strides now for people to play uh, than this one. So uh, that's probably it for Fenrir. Uh, Gelger would be affected because you'd be using it once per turn. So something important to note is that we also have to define what the rule is on how, how the once per turn works. So I'm going to set it as auto and act abilities that have a cost or say you may. So this has a cost, uh, just like Fenrir, and you put it on the bottom of your deck. So if you're going to use it once, that means you're going to get maximum of 6k power. If you're trying to prevent deck out and you don't have Fenrir as your vanguard to the mandatory soul charge too, then that means you're stuck with only having one card to prevent deck out if it was one, once per turn, so that would be affected as well. Then uh, regarding Fate Norn, so Norn is a card that I've seen people say they wish was hit. Um, obviously, there's a lot of decks now that have caught people's attention, so Regal isn't really on people's radar anymore uh, in the discourse, but this is definitely something that would be affected and in quite a few ways. So at the moment, Regal has been played way more than other variants of Genesis. And Regalia Fate Dawn is the big reason behind that because right now Regalia synergizes quite well with the Restand engine, the only kind of good Restand engine the deck has, and it's very good at using it. 
it's, it just flows better as a deck. So more people playing Regalia, and there's not really much representation anywhere else. If this was made into hards once per turn, then it would make people reconsider maybe. It might maybe make people be more willing to play uh, a different uh, Genesis boss besides Angelica or Frigg. Uh, Frigg, of course, is now in English yet. But then the thing is, is that the appeal with Norn is that you can have multiple copies in the back row as well. So you can have it behind your Vanguard and you plus with it because you're getting the drive checks. And then you have the rear guard as well that can resound with the pressure. So if you were having that limited, then that means something like Himiko, for example, wouldn't look as bad if you used Himiko to give triggers to uh, a Yidra Self, for example, boosted by Norn. Uh, even though Himiko only has two drive checks, as opposed to like the extra drives that Norn would give via restanding, whether we're talking about V or premium format, that is, then that would sort of make lesser decks more popular. Also Fortuna as well. Fortuna would also be a bit more appealing as another example, or Fenrir, because Fenrir would also work with Gelja to give a little bit of power, although Gelja would also become hard once per turn uh, in this sort of environment. But this is sort of one of the ways that the Genesis of Clan will be affected, but then there's also, there's also the case with the old Norn. So if this card was ever hit, or like I wouldn't be able to play as many copies, or rather not use as many copies then in terms of skills, then I would probably play like the older Norns that give 5k to Vanguard, especially because you've got Verachim as well who can do defensive plays by Soul Blasting Norn, because that's actually one of the things we miss out on is that uh, this card is such a staple right now regarding Fate Norn V-Series, but the original Norn was also a really good card from back in the day, because if you Soul Blast it, you give you Vanguard 5k, so it's, it's always been like one of my higher choices of cards I wish I could play, but I ended up opting to play four of this card instead. So... That is one way I think that things could change. If this was made into a hard once per turn, there would be a lot of uh, reviewing of playing playset cards because of that. Uh, playsets would be less popular if they were hard once per turns. Then moving on to the next one. So Kazande, this is another Genesis card which is also very spammable. So Soul Blast 2 and it gains 10. You can do infinite loops because of Gelger right now, but obviously if Gelger was hit by hard once per turn, this would also uh, be unable to loop because you'd use all day now and then just keep returning cards to the bottom of your deck. So that's the implication you would have to a card like this. Also there are a few cards that do something similar in Cat Sanctuary as well, which have Soul Blast cost and can produce more power. So something like this would be affected, an axe skill that's main phase but doesn't have a counter blast cost to it. Um, so there's a potential like how how there's like Songstar with that uh, Cray Elemental I think tier it was called, which can do like constant counter charging to keep enabling Songstar. Uh, this is kind of similar with Gelger, so this would also be uh, nerfed as well as a result. And then next we have Shadow Paladin, so Raging Form Dragon would be nerfed because the deck is sort of trying to go for that big, uh, try to snuff your opponent out of the game by doing a bit of sacking, uh, drive checking through the deck. Uh, basically farming defense uh, so it makes it hard for the opponent to come back next turn and then you just knock them over uh, on the following time. I think it's a bit of a high roll deck in some ways because going first is actually very strong going first because it exhausts the opponent if it doesn't kill them and then and then after that um, they sort of just have a bit of an easy win because they put the opponent in a situation where it's not quite as easy to uh, push back. So um, if Raging Form was hard once per turn then it would definitely have uh, massive implications uh, to the deck as well they wouldn't be able to farm as much defense and they'll be only attacking twice with this and in fact only using uh, two force markers in one turn then we've got uh, drag fence adapter so this would also be massively impacted because stand triggers i think would be the first thing that gets cut because the idea of stand triggers is to well Maybe maybe that's actually incorrect. Stand triggers probably would still get played because you would still stand a rear guard and get your extra attacks even if it's not Dagda. So I take that statement back a bit. Maybe some people might consider not playing stands and maybe they just decide, okay, well, I'll just rely on Dagda entirely because I want my 15k shields or something. I don't know. I'm not a Shadow main myself, but the thing is, a stand with Dagda allows you to use it twice per turn because it's not written as once per turn. So this is sort of one of the ways they try to uh, get a solid win against the opponent is by dry checking the stand and using on Dagda so they can use the skill twice. This is sort of their like big win condition to trying to win on first stride as well. 
And then we have one who views the planet globe mega. So this one is very massively impacted because there was an errata, which kind of just makes things even more confusing. And the errata is that it's actually what, what you've got in the image here because they seem to have a, a virtual copy of the card here, um, even though the physical card I don't think exists at all. So when your unit is placed on Vanguard or Rayguard, or when a card is put in your trigger zone, if you have a heart card with Magus in its card name, you may look at the top card of your deck and put it on the top of your deck. So it says you may look at the top card of your deck, which is an option. So because of that wording, and because it's no longer continuous, that would then become a once per turn. Now, this card is already hardly seeing play. Even in Magus decks, I've not seen people really playing this card. I own four SPs of this, actually, in my collection, but... It's just in the collection. I don't know if I will be using it or not. Um, but it's kind of a bit of a shame. But now I think with Dragon King, that card, I think, has sort of um, made some of the G set 5 strides nowhere near popular anymore because I know for sure Karma Sasano, I've not touched it ever since the Dragon King came out. And I think even Globe Magus, I don't think we've seen any play now that Dragon King's around. It's very unlikely. So... They haven't aged very well. At this point, they're more like collector's cards uh, at this point now. I think they've reached that kind of stage where they're almost like collector's cards. So this thing would sort of just be looking once, which would hurt. Then moving on to Dragon Empire, we have Do you want it over the Ace? So Do you want it over the Ace? Uh, that card is... Um, you can basically stack it twice in one turn. So some people have actually tried to restand on first stride with this because what they do is they use the skill once to Canvas 2 and then use it again to Canvas 2, and then do another G-Flip on top of the first G-Flip, and then you gain the skill. So, if you make that into a once per turn, then you're going to go over the Ace, won't be able to do a first stride restand with that, so that would be effective. And then, uh, onto the Dark Zone, we've got Nightmare Doll Alice. So, Alice, actually, this was added to the restriction list uh, recently, or choice restriction list, so this should have been part of a later segment in the video. I kind of forgot about this uh, restriction. I think it's kind of easy to forget about it because I don't think anyone really um, paid much mind to it. Um, so basically, this would be effective because it would uh, no longer be able to do the Ginny spam. So for every count boss you have, you can keep on using the skill. Obviously, you have Axe Dockers as well. So it does make it very aggressive on top of uh, the Dark Lord Princess stride. So uh, that's obviously... Um, a deck that will get impacted by it um, for sure so Nightmare Door Alice is definitely something that would uh, be there then we've got No Life King Death Anchor so this card has been seeing so much play in Dark Irregular ever since this card came out like almost every deck in premium has been using it except for I think maybe Gas Steel where I think that's the only time where people were cutting No Life King were to use uh, Gas Steel but generally no, Life King has sort of just become, sort of just defined the entire clan actually because it's just so strong and it also gets you protect markers while you're using the skill. So that's just very good value. The power numbers are big and it's getting a crit. So it does force good guarding as well from your opponent. And then you can go into like any grade three, which is kind of funny because um, the Gastel Strike got banned because it can copy two Vanguard names. But No Life King is sort of a bit like that because you've got No Life King and he's doing his thing, but then he's also bringing another Grade 3 out afterwards. So um, it, I think that's kind of like what makes it very strong is that you can go into like a lot of Grade 3s, even the ones in Dark States as well. So it's a, a weird card and I'm not sure if that had anything to do with maybe why um, Blade Wing and... Even I think Gas Steel was nerfed because Gas Steel, the Grade 3 Gas Steel, I think activated at the start of the battle phase. So you couldn't use it with No Life King properly. So I think No Life King was more of a backup boss because you can use it for defensive players, of course, to get PGs to hand. So this card will be massively impacted because now you can only use it for one restand extra attack. So that would obviously be a bit of a big deal because being able to spam No Life King is sort of what makes this card... Uh, like pushes it to the edge basically in terms of its power level so that'll be impacted next we have Fugilin uh, I'm on to follow Fugilin uh, oh sorry Fujinlin I don't even know how you pronounce it so this card's been seeing a lot of play in Dark Irregulars um, the idea is usually to just spam this from the beginning of the game and then you just build a lot of soul so this has obviously helped with the Gastil Turbo for example or No Life King 
and uh, Shahara or any other uh, popular played boss in either V or Premium format. So if this was hard once per turn, or obviously it says once per turn already on it, then the engine would slow down for sure. So that would be impacted. Uh, another thing that would be impacted is Mecha Instructor. So uh, right now this card is being used at four copies uh, index with uh, the new Galley Stride because Galley is um, quite clumsy designed in that it doesn't really regard Mecha Instructor existing. So they kind of made it where you can just call any grade two or less and then you just return cards while giving them 10 key power as well on attack. And you're returning cards, but then this card actually triggers. It's not the charge bit, it's the it's the bit where it returns that matters. So because of that, um, you can use Mecha Instructor multiple times in the game, in the, sorry, in one turn. And, and of course, uh, if you do that, then you get loads of attacks in the process. So at the moment, it just kind of wins first stride, of course, with the Rising Nova giving Force 1 and 2 on top. So it's very dangerous right now. So I think if this was hard once returned, it would definitely have a massive impact because then they can use it once, which would uh, affect um, the sort of more guaranteed first strike here. Obviously, if you get a damage over trigger, it's okay. Next, we'll go to uh, Link Joker. So uh, Lie Down to Given would be impacted because there are actually, there's actually a deck that is being played sort of, um, I've seen people sort of theory craft a bit, but I did have an opponent who used this recently on me. So this is obviously inspired a bit from the fact that I've actually experienced playing game against it recently. It was a very interesting deck. Um, so Given would be affected because what you've got here is you've got this other stride, uh, Nebula Dragon, Cosmic Dawn Dragon. So his ability is on attack. You can basically superior cool cards from your deck. Top seven you're looking through. So you can look for Given and you can kind of keep replenishing Given and then use it again and pay the cost to keep uh, standing this and then attacking with this again and using the skill again. So if these were both hard once per turn, then you'd only be able to use each of them once, which means you can't spam into the other one. So these two would be affected for sure. Then moving on to Nova Grappler, we've got Busted. So Busted, uh, the this card has kind of like dominated Nova Grappler now. Like other strides aren't being played uh, from what I've heard and from what I've actually personally experienced myself. I've not really seen people go into other strides that much since this card came out. Uh, the game seems to just be uh, just try and give this card as many drive checks as possible and then do your restand play and then hit the over trigger hopefully um, and obviously Brian get over triggers is uh, probably the hardest one to deal with in the game so this card would be affected because if you're only using it once then there's less there's less um, likelihood of people actually going into it that means other uh, strides will also see play and Another Nova Grappler stride that will be affected is Victor Plasma. So it's very similar to Dragonic Oval of the Ace. You can do the same thing where you do the G flip and then you get the um, restand on first stride as well. So this would be affected. Uh, this is actually an early example I remember from back when the when G era first started. I used to see this play being used a lot. So it's one of my earliest memories of G. Uh, then Silver Singer q -tire. So this is obviously a popular card in Highlander decks, obviously in, in hybrid decks with Ange and whatever that you may have seen. Um, I've, I've actually played against that build. I played against it for AO. Uh, it was against um, uh, Manlong's build. Um, so it was round two. Um, I went against it. Um, yeah, um, it was uh, It was very... Um, I mean, I, I guess I shouldn't have been too surprised. Um, I've always thought like there's potential for Bermuda decks to find like some um, alternatives, especially to Prism, because... It did kind of feel like Prism was definitely being a bit overshadowed. Sorry, overshadowing the other kind of wild combos you can do in Bermuda. But anyway, uh, Qtaya, um, V Prima aside, uh, this card has been used, especially in Prima actually, with uh, cards like Alk. Uh, although I don't think Alk is going to be mained as much now because of how Truda coming out. But uh, there's there's Alk, there's uh, Akari, uh, there's uh, cards like. Um, well, you got Shizuku that can search. But no, you can't bounce. Uh, so Kari, Alk, oh Aqua, sorry. So Aqua as well. So they're just some ideas, some some uh, names that come to the top of my head. You can basically use cards like those to bounce uh, Kutai back to your hand, and then you reuse Kutai to then just search for any card in your deck, basically. Uh, well, most of the time. So uh, the, this card has been basically spammed to make uh, Bermuda Highlander like get a massive head start over other decks. 
So, of course, if this was hard once per turn, then that will have a massive impact on Qtai because it will probably make people rethink now their strategies around it because the idea is to actually try and spam this card rather than using it just once. And it's a great three, so unless you found a way to superior quality game, like, for example, Lisa Let um, Take, for example, then you're not going to be able to use it across all stages of the game. So it would definitely have to kind of push out within that one turn, which is sort of what makes the... The fact that it's in Bermuda Triangle and it can bounce the hand and reuse the effect, like it's sort of what makes it so good, despite it being a grade three, because you don't need to use early game, you can just burst it out all in one go. So of course, Harbour Once Per Turn would affect it. And then we've got Flash Ripple Odysseus. So Odysseus is, um, I've not played against the new Ripple deck, but obviously what you can do with it is you can rewrite another grade three. And because of that, you then get the Axle Circle. So this is kind of a different way of using it to what the old deck used to do um, back in uh, G era, where in G era, uh, they used to do more grade two gaming with it. Uh, but now it's more a case of um, making use the Axle Circle. So just like Wonder Ezel, it's very similar in principle. Um, not really that much a surprise that this is what's happening now. Um, so if this was hard once per turn, they'd only be able to produce two Axle Circles during turn three, which would be a bit of enough. And of course, um, this card, like being able to use it more and more, um, obviously makes more of a difference. So if they're only sitting on one, and they can only use it on turn three to the axle rewrite, because you're doing it on the same turn that you're on grade three, of course. So just like you tire, where you kind of have to wait until you're on turn three, it's the same thing with this card. We have to wait until you're on turn three. So um, stacking multiple of these onto the field would then make no difference because you're going to use one of them. So that would be affected. Then we've got Choo Choo debut stage Tarua. So this card would be affected because, yes, it's a once per turn, but it's Bermuda Triangle. So just like uh, just like with Qtire, you can bounce this back to your hand with cards like Crook and Speaker, and obviously your Strides as well, which then means you can then call this back out again and then uh, use the condition to then restand and swing again. So uh, Tarua is definitely uh, one of the other cards that will be massively impacted. So Bermuda does seem to be getting hit quite a bit now. Uh, another card that would be impacted is, uh, well, not even a card, more like a series of cards, which are the Bloom cards. So I feel like Murakum and Neonectar are probably the likely ones to get hurt the most, but Bloom is obviously already in a really bad place uh, in terms of playability, like no one's been using it. Um, but it would be a massive downside, I think, if there was a hard once would turn introduce the game because of Bloom. So that would be like one of the significant downsides in my opinion um and i think the same can go with uh, murakumo although i don't know it too well so i'm not sure how damaging it would be in murakumo but there is a card that uh murakumo card i'm going to go through after so um now that we're, on the, we're, we're done with the kind of cards that are right now legal in the game um well proper fully legal although i did accidentally have one of the choice tricks of cards actually which is the nightmare Door alice but Everything in this list so far is a card that you can play with no restrictions in the game. But now we're going to move on to the restricted cards, which, uh, speaking of Katrina anyway, uh, let's move on to you know, the actual restricted cards that is not Katrina. Uh, so, uh, Wonder Ezel. So, Wonder Ezel uh, would obviously become a hard once per turn. Um, when your opponent rides grade 3, then they can only use that one Wonder Ezel in their hand, so they can't just spam loads of axle circles in that one turn if they open more copies of this uh, which obviously is like one of the scary things about Wonder Ezel is the fact that you can do that um, no that would not be the case because the way it's worded if you were to apply this rule it says when this unit is placed on Rayfield grade 3 Vanguard Ezel in its name uh, is stand then you search it for up to one card so it's not actually um, it's not saying the words you may so You'd probably have to change the rules of the hard ones per turn for this to actually be applied to the rules I, I set out at the beginning. So, of course, you have to be very careful if you were to um, try a format like this because you'd have to make the rules kind of like very clear. You have to kind of go through every card in careful detail. And this would be one of those cases where it wouldn't really work in this sort of framework. Uh, but then we go into Doctoroid Referos. So this card, this card can um, basically, if it becomes once per turn, then obviously this would have no reason to be limited uh, because obviously they, they hit it because they didn't want the game going too long although I think at the time it was over the no seal power but uh, right now I think it is more just about time so it just stayed limited but 
um, that's more or less it. It's it's um, something that would probably end up being freed from the restriction list. And then we've got Gold of Sound, Sleep Tower. This would easily get freed because, um, well, to be fair, there's a lot of ways you can free this from restriction list even right now without the rule change. Because I, I know I know because I played this clan, so I know like a lot of different things you could try and do. But um, it says here like GB1, put this card on Bonfire deck. Uh, when this card is put on, into your drop from your soul, you may put. Uh, you may pay the cost. So basically, um, you've got the two bits there. You've got the cost and you've got the, you may pay the cost. Well, obviously, you may pay the cost. It's always there if you have the cost. So that's how old cards were worded. So yeah, that would just become a hard once per turn, which would be a massive nerf to Genesis. But then at the same time, um, Regali would also be massively nerfed. So um, that might actually reduce some of the disparity uh, between the two decks to some extent. Although, CO Yggdrasil, like, that's the thing as well. Um, CO Yggdrasil, can search for Norn, but then if Tara was like unbanned completely at four copies, then you could play more copies anyway, just for the sake of increasing the consistency of searching it. Because obviously, if you had it limited, you can't search it if it's limited, except if you ride Fenrir three and you don't stride. Um, that's the only way you can actually bring out the Tara selectively. Otherwise, you have to go through Heaven and Earth um, just to kind of turn your whole deck upside down and just find that card because you have no searches besides that. So, and technically, there is actually another searcher. Um, Persephone, which is a limit break on place card, but you have to have another copy of the card in the first place, so even if it was limited you couldn't meet the condition anyway because you need to have a second copy in your deck and I know Myth Guards off the top of my head as well can search, but that's Myth Guard specific, so yeah, that would um, obviously uh, easily uh, co uh, cause that to be freed um, although there's other reasons it, it should be freed from um, my own knowledge then we've got Tamba, so Tamba um, choose a normal unit from your drop zone and put it on to bomb your deck. So that's the cost. Um, so there's a cost on it, but then it says any battle that your unit attacks, you tell did not hit, you pay cost if you do it against 3k. So this card got banned because of uh, Murakumo loop, um, which is kind of weird because there are still loops that are legal in this game. Uh, so I don't know, like, it just seemed like they kind of decided to purge in one wave and then just ignore the other ones that people noticed after, but um yeah uh that's that's that um although technically the maelstrom reverse uh loop is no longer around because they did that link joker restriction but i think tamba would i believe it would get unrestricted because i think the whole point is that this is supposed to keep on going over and over and over but if you can only do it once then that changes everything so that would easily get freed um then there's a shoulda so this card is a kind of a weird one because um the thing is Prior to the Team APS video, the idea of Hard Once Returns existing in Vanguard actually exists in my head like a year before that. Like actually last year, uh, when they revealed this card, people obviously pointed out the Dentarian uh, combo, which I think was an oversight from R&D. Uh, they took on the challenge of creating nations, even though they apparently didn't know much about premium. And it kind of blew up a bit in their face because they, they made this and then it's like, oh, um, yeah, we have a fix for it. Uh, we're going to announce it soon. So, when they said that, um, so I, I thought initially they would errata it before release because they did this before with other cards. Uh, like with, um, they did it with Genesis with uh, Lading, the starter. They did it with Grand Blue as well. I think in G set 8, there was a starting Vanguard that Grand Blue got for Night Rose, which also had an errata, which was going to do like a first stride infinite loop combo. So they've done they've done that before where they've errata cards before release. Um, and because of that, uh, I thought maybe they'll do the same with this, because obviously you should be um, designing cards with premium in mind. If you're making premium an internal format where you can still use these new cards, then um, you should always take it into account. Otherwise, just make it into a new clan if, if you don't want to do that, but just make Dark States a separate clan, I guess. But um, so I thought, okay, since, since Keita Mori made that announcement, I thought, okay, there's no way this is going to be an errata because if it was I'm sure they would have said so already so then I started speculating in between that and the actual announcement and then I thought to myself wait a second what would actually hit this because what if it's not a ban list because obviously that'll be the most boring and kind of like lamest I, I thought it'd be kind of lame to be honest because it's like you're getting people in suspense over something you can already change in the design step so I didn't think it would be a ban list that's the, like I was so convinced. No, I don't think it's going to get restricted. Um, 
uh, but I didn't think it was going to get routed either because I think they would have done it by then. Like they were told us right then. So then I was thinking, what could he be hyping? Like, is this a new rule change or something? So then my speculation led me to think that there might be hard ones per turn based on that kind of uh, line of thinking. And um, obviously that's not what happened in the end. But that's sort of like how the idea popped in my head where like this idea of hard once per turns. And then when Team APS sort of talked about it again, then I started kind of thinking about these hard once per turns again. And then it just led me to make this discussion video um, just to kind of see what you guys think as well. Um, but yeah, that's um, this is obviously uh, something that would get affected because it says you may put this card into your soul. So uh, this would easily be freed from the choice restraint, which would then help to declutter that list. Next, we have Visible Songster. So Songster, I think this is like the least controversial ban maybe in the entire game i don't know for sure like when i um I, I probably should look at the restriction list again but to me this is like the easiest ban to ever get behind um to my memory because it's a single rare that that wasn't really i don't think it really had that much sentimental value like it's probably very few people who probably just i guess um found something different and thought okay or maybe someone that just likes harpies i don't know um but it's very, very niche to the point that it's very unlikely that you'll get any noise if over this card getting banned. Um, but what this card has been used for is obviously like different types of infinite loot plays. Um, so you had the, actually not even different types, it's more of the same one, but they just empowered it because of the GB1 that Tempest Sphere and Zazen gave. Uh, so this card was um, very based on uh, the idea of like a turn four, like you get your G guard, uh, or you stride, so it depends if you go first, second, but if you go second, you need your, your G-Guard, uh, and, oh sorry, if you go first, you need your G-Guard, uh, then then you'd um, give your GB1, and then on turn four, you do your uh, tier, credit tier loop uh, with this card, but uh, in um, Temisphere and Zazen, when they made those, the obvious implication that I 100% saw coming, like instantly, and I'm not even a Palmin player, so I, I knew I knew this is like one of the first things I thought of when they revealed Temisphere and Zazen, was, okay, song set, it's time. So uh, Songstar obviously um, uh, made people cry for a little bit. Like I, I had friends at locals playing this as well. Um, so um, it was quite fun. <laughs> um, there was there was a bit of a there's a bit of a thing where what you do is you just try and get like just build those damage triggers. Obviously it's all luck based, but what a time. Uh, so Songstar hard once per turn would definitely make it so that you can't spam this card because the cost is uh, the card that you rely on to. Well, the cost aspect is what you allow to actually keep it going. So this would easily get unbanned in a hard once per turn environment. Uh, purple trapezes. So this is part of a three-way choice restriction. In fact, this is the only three three-way choice restriction in uh, premium uh, right now. I think Bermuda's also got their own uh, three-way choice restrictions now lately in V premium. So um, it's really weird because they could have done three-way choice restrictions with some other clans. I'm just saying. Um, it, I don't know. I don't know why it had to be just uh, Power Moon that that got this uh, special treatment, but um, Purple Trapezist would definitely, I think, um, have no reason to stay on the restriction list because if it's only once that you can use it, then then you can use it once. So, and the same goes for Jumping Jill. So Jumping Jill, um, it's also a costed card. So that too, and also. Um, I think Fly Imperiton, it would probably be the same with this as well, I'm guessing. I'm not a Power Moon expert, but I think this whole three-way Chosen Strike will probably just dissolve in that environment. Uh, then we go on to Enigmatic Assassin. So Enigmatic Assassin, uh, his ability is um, basically at the beginning of your attack step, if the number of cards in your soul is 10 or more, you may call this card. So it's an optional effect that meets that condition that I mentioned uh, earlier. Now this card will probably be uh, 3 to 4 in that environment because now at this point you're just playing more copies for the sake of searching more copies not because not because you want to use multiple one go because you can't use multiple one go so that would obviously get freed easily in that environment uh then we've got dreamer dreamer crook so dreamer dreamer crook um of course that would also um be another card that would have this um restriction get lifted because if you're gonna use it once then what's the point of it being limited anyway that like the only the only point is just to make it harder to draw into it. Although Qtire begs to differ, but uh, then we've got uh, Unbeliever Girl Potpourri, which is not going to be affected uh, because um, this card doesn't actually meet the conditions, unfortunately. So when this unit's attack hits a Vanguard, choose one of your other rear guards. 
Um, so it's not worded that way unless you change the rules maybe a bit, but I don't think I can right now come up with something that makes sense. So, oh, that's coherent enough. Um, so this would probably be stuck with Fina, but that being said, Popori Fina was never that good anyway. So, but I don't know. Um, Bermuda, I mean, Bermuda Triangle is kind of a scary clan because no matter what you hit, there's always like something that people find. So I could be underestimating it very easily anyway. So I'll probably like reserve my opinions on that. Then I think Helmsman Nitro would be likely to get unhit anyway. Apparently there's a reason why these 70s cards are still being hit. There's apparently some sort of loot play or something like that. But if it's hard once per turn, then I don't see that uh, staying around. So Night Runner as well. Uh, same thing goes with this. And then uh, lastly, Cosmos Pixie Lizbeth. So uh, another Bloom card. Um, this one would definitely, um, definitely uh, be okay. So... Um, I think that's more or less it. Um, so yeah, let me know uh, down below what you think um, would happen. Like any any sort of implications that I haven't covered because I'm sure there's a lot, and that's why it's a discussion uh, video because I can't, I don't have a very good view on the entirety of a 10 year card game. So um, this is definitely definitely one of these topics that I don't think it makes sense for someone to have a strong opinion on because there's just so much what we all don't know ourselves. So we're all just pulling our knowledge together and just kind of like, I guess, flirting on the topic of it, like just food for thought, really. Um, it's just interesting to see what people's takes are on this um, and on what things they think could happen. So, yeah, let me know down below. Um, if you want to see more discussion videos like this, um, let me know as well. Um, and um, I guess uh, for more, then just like and subscribe will, and that will probably help as well. Uh, that way, you know um, that the video is um, that another video is coming out as well. And until then, I will see you later. Goodbye.